that group? The cult. The cult. <laughs> who was uh, who was that over here? You're the only two people. <laughs> Okay, guys. Uh, top of the hour. Good morning. Happy Friday to everybody. The, um, any questions about lab? Well, we got ten seconds. Okay, let's get started. Confirmations. Confirmations. Uh, before we get into confirmations, let's look at nomenclature. Uh, we'll do that here at the beginning. Uh, complex subs, I think, I worked this one in the video maybe, did I work this one in the video? Did we name this guy in the video? I don't think I did, let's name this one over here. Longest continuous chain, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, right through there, straight. Ten, that's the only ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you look, there's no other ten. Longest continuous chain is ten. I'm going to circle it here. Ten is what? Decade, like a decade. We have a decade. What is on the decade? Everything outside the little loop here is on the decade. I have two things, here and here. We can name them. Uh, let's go ahead and look at positioning. Which end is the one position? If this is the one end, it would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. If this was the one end, it would be one, two, three, four, uh oh, five, and six. It's five and six either way we go. <coughs> How are we going to determine which, which one's five and which one's six? That is, how are we going to determine which is the one end? Alphabetically. Yeah, eventually alphabetically. We're going to have to name those first before we can do alphabetically. What's the name of this extension? Uh, it's a propyl group. What's the name of that substituent? Oh, that's a complex sub. That's a substituent with a substituent. Okay, it's coming off right here. All right. Longest continuous chain. The one position is the first carbon coming off the parent chain. So start here. Is it one, two, or is it one, two, three? Well, it's one, two, three, obviously, right? <coughs> and three is what? Same as this was. Propyl. But that propyl has something on it. Yes. There's a mouthful on the propyl. What position of this propyl is the methyl at? The one position. How do we know that was one? Because by default, the first carbon coming off the parent is where one is. So while this is the propyl, what, that's a complex sub that is called one methyl propyl. And typically we put complex subs in parentheses. So this decane has two subs, this and that. Uh, since alphabetical M becomes before P, we can say that the M group is going to be the lower number. So we're going to call that 5 and this 6. Thus, this ended up being 1. And so we have a decane at the 5 position. Now, how do we list these? Do we list these a number of... of uh, Location or by alphabetical? <coughs> They're listed alphabetical, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. In fact, we're going to list the, okay, at five position, we have what? A one methyl propyl. 
dash next number is what six? The six dash we have a what? Propyl. And that's all one word. So I wrote it sort of to make it all one word there. So the name of that compound is 5-1-methylpropyl, 6-propyl decane. Do subs have the lowest possible numbers? Yes, 5 and 6. <coughs> because the end is 1. We just have to decide which end was 1 because you got 5 and 6 going from either way. Uh, how do we do? Any questions about this page here? Common names. <coughs> Did I cover everything else down here on video? Any questions about this? I have a question. Question back here first. If you were to use a common name, um, when you alphabetize it, would you go by the, the sec, like sec butyl, would you go by the S or the B? Uh, could we have used a common name up here? Yes. This complex sub actually has a common name. Anybody know it? Secbutyl. It's actually a secbutyl, yes. And secbutyl has a dash. Whenever you have a dash, you ignore the, uh, the prefix, and it would just be considered a B for alphabetical. And so we could have said five secbutyl. This looks like it needs parentheses. Uh, five sec butyl, six propyl. We could have did that. Uh, B still would have come before P. You could get into many variations which we wouldn't know how to handle because if the common name was like a R, a R, then you're like, well, should it come after? I reckon so, but it, so if you, but then if it comes after, you would switch your five and six, and then you say, well, should we only do that based on non-common or common? The deeper you go, the more questions they are. So we, there's a certain level here that we've done. Um, other questions? Secbutyl, um, tartbutyl. I just said T-butyl here. I should have said tert. What does T stand for? Tertiary. That's what they stand for. Secondary. Um, but that's often you see tert. Tert butyl. Uh, because we can do primary secondary carbons, we'll point this out. <coughs> um, because here it's ignoring it's ignoring what is bonded to. Okay, and so that carbon is bonded to three other carbons, so it's tertiary. Okay? It's ignoring what it's bonded to. So this carbon is bonded to two other carbons, so it's secondary. And so that's why it's called a segbutyl. By the way, this is often uh, glossed over and then sometimes missed. Notice that it says butyl here, where over here it said propyl. Same group. Why is it called propyl there but butyl here? Because in the common, common name, the butyl comes from the total number of carbons there. It's four carbons. But in the systematic name, there's four carbons here. It's a propyl with a methyl. But it's done a little bit differently. You've got a parent plus a methyl. Where this includes the whole group. Question here? When you have subs like like chloro, but what about iodine? Iodo. 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 Yes. Fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. That's how, that's how the halogens are done. Questions? Um, so if we don't consider the sec or the tert when we're um, naming them alphabetically, would we also ignore the iso, even though there's no dash? No, ISO, you would go with I. Such, such little things like that are not going to be a problem on the present test. Uh, there's many num uh, little questions like that. 
the nomenclature book is this thick and you can spend a semester or two just doing nomenclature on all these various things. But there are good questions to ask. Um, okay, um, what about, do you have any questions about these from the video? The names of the video? Pack approach, okay. Putting the, the halo before the alkane. For example, one bromopropane. That's actually an official IUPAC. You may hear the same compound called something like propyl bromide or n-propyl, n meaning normal or straight chain. That's a little bit more slang name, but it's very common. Uh, a little bit careful here. Typically, the I ending means anion. So even chloride, I to me means anion. But that's not an anion. So recognize that they're kind of taking little liberties here with that I ending. Uh, I believe I named these by video. Uh, this one over here, we'll name it real quick. Longest continuous chain. Anybody get that other than what we've already talked about this morning. Longest continuous chain. One, two, three, we all know one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Either way you go, it's five, but that's really no difference. There's no subs here. It's doesn't matter. Pentane. Everything else is on the pentane. We have an iodo, a chloro, and what is this? <laughs> And a methyl. Okay, your alkane substituents are named with the YL ending. Butane, when it's one thing, if the butane group is a substituent, it's called a butyl. YL ending. So not methane, but methyl group on the pentane, which is the one end. If this was one, it would be, subs would be two, three, and four. If this was the one in, subs would be two, three, and four. Uh-oh, either way you go, it's two, three, or four. How are we going to break or determine this? Alphabetical. It can become complicated if you've got multiple substituents because you don't know do the... Ultimately, the answer is ace is high. Just look at the first group. I or methyl? I do or methyl? I comes before M. So actually, because of alphabetical, we're going to make it be 2, 3, 4, that choice of 2, 3, 4. And so the numbering is like that. Now we list these in alphabetical, so what's first? Chloro, 3 chloro, uh, 2 iodo, 4 methyl, kenting. How's that look? Question. So the order that you labeled these uh, situants doesn't have to be the order that you put it in the name. It's like it wouldn't be like two I or three four. No, these are listed alphabetically. <laughs> Didn't it say that on the front mm -hmm. side? Mm -hmm. List subs alphabetically. And I actually wrote it wrong at one point then. So for test one, you're, you're only uh, need to worry about up to here. Okay. This down here, I just give you to, as a kind of a preview of future nomenclature, and you'll see consistencies. <coughs> Okay. 
Alcohol is one, it's a four carbon alcohol. Okay? You don't include the oxygen in anything, it's only four carbons. And so you got a butane, or this could be called n butyl alcohol, because it's a straight chain, or n butanol. We basically change the ending to like OL. And as you go through nomenclature through organic 2, you'll just have different endings depending on functional groups. The OL ending indicates an alcohol. Uh, there's no numbers here because it's, it's going by N. That's a little slang. Uh, more common would be to make this 1-butanol because the OH is at the 1 position. Okay. What would 2-butanol look like? This is just free information. Uh, just 2-butanol, uh, the OH would be here. 2 position. There's no such thing as 3-butanol. Because 3-butanol is really 2-butanol. You just be coming from the other end. So that's just a little preview. You can see what's coming ahead. All we need to know is up to uh, alkyl halides. Um, while we're here, and then we'll get back, we'll jump back to uh, confirmations. Let's see how we did on these condensed. Uh, I've got three methyls, and these three methyls must be on this carbon. So I've got a carbon with three methyls. This carbon must be bonded to another carbon. This carbon, I've got two methyls. Uh, perhaps they're bonded to this carbon here. Then to this carbon, that's a CH2. Uh, perhaps put them there and keep going. Then we got another carbon, CHO. What is this? CHO? No. H don't make two bonds. So what is this? C. This carbon must be bonded to the O. Well, if it is, why didn't they say COH? Well, because there's a variety of possibilities here. Uh, it's, I'll draw it here, CO, do you think the H is bonded to the carbon or the O? The it is bonded to the carbon, because if it was bonded to the O, you're going to end up with nothing on that carbon at all. Because O is now fine, it's actually bonded to the carbon. Well, what's going on here? Well, it's actually a double bond. And what functional group do we have here on the end? It's turned a little bit, but what is that? It's a carbonyl with a, with a carbon and an H. Aldehyde. Okay. The CHO is a common condensed for aldehyde group, head group. All right. That's how we can. Let's draw this out linear. Uh, linear I'm sorry, not linear. Line bond. This is more called linear formula uh, or linear structure. Let's do line bond. We got a carbon with three methyls. I got a carbon here, carbon here. That carbon had two methyls. Okay. It doesn't matter how you draw them. I can be drawing them down. We have, we're not worried about stereochemistry yet. I do typically do zigzag, and those uh, confirmations will tell us why we do that. This carbon has two H's. It's bonded to another carbon, and that carbon is double bonded to an O, and then it has an H. I like to draw in the hydrogen of an aldehyde. Otherwise, to me, it looks naked. Some people don't. I like to draw it in reinforce the aldehyde. There's your structure there that, that we came up with. There's your aldehyde. Again, the CHO here is condensed usually CHO. All right? Just have to know that. Let's try the one down here below. 
Uh, I got a carbon with a methyl. This carbon, I got two methyls here. I reckon they're bonded to that carbon. Then this carbon is bonded to this one. This carbon is, what is this? O, O, H? Well, this carbon ain't got the two bonds. It's also a peroxide, which is unusual. No, this is a condensed for what? Yes, that's, that's a carboxylic acid. That is, let's see, carbon with, it's right here, isn't it? Carbon with a methyl, two more methyls on the carbon apparently, and then the carboxylic acid. By the way, look at the end. A carbon with three methyls. Carbon with three methyls. This could have been shown differently. It could have been shown carbon, maybe like that, with three methyls, and then just put the, there. I could have just shown it like that to be more in line with how that was shown. That doesn't mean we can't show it like that as well. Uh, I give you these because these are two common condensed functional groups that you should know at this point and be able to recognize. The aldehyde and the carboxylic acid. By the way, sometimes carboxylic acid is done with the H is drawn out. COOH. I would do it CO2H. But a lot of times you may see it like that. Um, so we can do a line bond. We have methyl, 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 and then carboxylic acid, right? So this is what we had here. The, the thing with these, if you think it was a pos another possible answer, then look at it. I guarantee you, if you tried to do something else, you would not have four bonds to carbon. It would be a bad structure. If you came up with another good structure for this, let me look at it. There's, there's probably something wrong with it. So just as long as you just make sure you got good structure, and, and it will get you there. I mean, because if you thought that these, these were on somewhere else, it's going to be a bad structure. Our structures look good, yeah? Four bonds, oxygen, two bonds, two long pairs. Um, I want to jump ahead. We can pick this up closer to the end. Let's jump ahead to some uh, confirmation. Confirmations. So we're looking at uh, ethane here and how it can rotate of the bond to sigma bond, right? It can rotate. Because it can rotate these groups um, relative to these other groups, this relative orientation can change on rotating. When it's like that, we call it eclipsed, but it can rotate and maybe be like that, and that would be staggered. These are, these are different conformations, conformations of your molecule. Um, and that's what we're dealing with here. We did a Newman projection, right? It will draw this on the board uh, to show this. Uh, we did circle, circle, dot, dot. Uh, the front, I don't know exactly how I did it. Maybe I had it. If, uh, Whatnot, but I'll do it again from the start. Front carbon, we've got an H going straight up. We've got an H coming here. We've got an H coming here. That's the front. The back, it's behind this disc. Okay, like the disc is here. We can't see that carbon back there. We know it's back there, but we can see the we can see the H's or whatever is here coming out. One's coming here, one's coming here, and one's coming straight down. Now you see that this is a staggered conformation. 
if we had the thing in the back rotated like that, that would be eclipsed. That's nicely staggered. By the way, what's the dihedral angle between these two hydrogens? And what is a dihedral angle? It's shown there. I'll give you a fresh look at it. Uh, what's the angle of this here? 90 degrees, right? Okay. But that's all in the plane of the board. A dihedral angle of two planes. Okay? It's the same thing, just two different planes. What if I had a line here, and then I had the ruler here of two boards? That's on that plane, and the ruler's on this plane. What's the angle between that line and this line? Still 90 degrees. It's like that's 90 degrees. The only thing I've done is I've brought this plane out. But it's still a 90 degree, it's called a dihedral angle. Okay? But we can have all types of angles compared to the other plane. For example, that right there may be, what, 45 or something compared to that. What about this? Zero. And as we start rotating, Okay, at 180 degrees, but 90 is the, is the easiest to start with, right? That's dihedral. Same thing here. See, these H's are really out here. You got two different planes. Look at this. What the one in the back? Yes, it's leaning back, but it's still in terms of angle. What's the what's the dihedral angle between between this H and this H? 60 degrees. No, as is, it's 90. It's 90. Straight up and straight horizontal, right? When the back is straight up, when the front is straight horizontal, that's 90 degrees, right? Ninth grade geometry? Yes. All right. The 60 is typical conformations that are shown. That right there, is, which, is, which is a nicely staggered, the best staggered, because as you start moving there, these starting to become eclipsed again. Uh, let's go back here. Here it is. What's the dihedral angle between these two? You see, it's really two different planes. But if you put it all on the board, it becomes one plane. If you limit it to the board, what is this? If this H was here, that would be 90. But that's actually 60 degrees. The dihedral angle between all these is 60. Because if you come completely around, it should add up to what? 360. And if you go from here to here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're doing 6 turns, and 360 divided by 6 is 60. Each turn is 60. What do I mean by turn? I'm talking about the standard turns that we demonstrate. There's an infinite number of dihedral angles possible. Right here, what's the dihedral angle between the two H's when they're eclipsed? Zero. Okay. How about now? Maybe one degree? Two degree? Two and a half? We don't look at all those. We look at sort of exact ones. We go from here to completely <coughs> staggered, and that's, that's a 60 degree turn. What if we do another 60 degree turn? Keep in that one. What's the, what's the dihedral angle now between the original? There it's zero. This one here. Um, see, I can also do this. It's called decomposition. <laughs> um, zero. Sixty. Completely uh, staggered. What if I come again? Now it's eclipsed up in here, but what's the dihedral angle between the back H and the one that we're focused on? 120. Now 120. Okay. Now we're back to nicely staggered. What's that dihedral angle between this and the green? 180. 180. Okay. You keep going. We come this way. What's the dihedral now between this and the green? 120. How about now? 60? 
So we, 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 now we're starting to get closer and closer, and now we're back to zero. Okay, that's a little bit of the dihedral angle. Uh, that's important. Um, let's see where we're at. We have the purple, and then we have the hand out. Um, with the ethane, let's look at energy diagrams. The energy of the rotation can be plotted. That's what this top is showing here. By the way, we didn't do an, uh, a Newman of an eclipse. You see them here. Uh, it's actually starting eclipsed. Okay, let me draw it eclipsed. Let's get to this point from scratch. Um, okay, the front is the same as over there. I'll make the back like this. The front's the same. The back has been turned. Let's draw this on the board. Eclipse. Same thing. Circle, circle, dot, dot. The front, we got an H straight up. We got an H like this and an H like this. By the way, they're always going to have this orientation with this type of bond. This is just your standard tetrahedral bond angle. The bond angle here is 109.5 between here and here. I mean, that's just, forget about anything. We know that that's sp3 and it's 109.5, essentially. That's what this is showing. But that's not a dihedral angle. That's just the standard bond angle for a given atom. Now the back, you can't really see that H back there. We could say you were done. The H in the back is right behind that one. But see, that's not, that's not clear, at least to ambiguity. Usually what's done is, it's drawn a little bit to the side, okay? Just a little bit, sort of like this. So it, it clarifies that, yes, it's back there. And we usually when we see this, we envision that this is exactly right behind the other. Okay? And I, I draw this one sort of like that. Now I, I'm drawing the, the back line a little bit to that side, far side of the original. So this one I'm going to draw like this. But well, that would be an example of drawing an eclipsed. And that's what they have here. Okay? So we can start there. Now they're rotating. What did they rotate? The front or the back? Actually rotated the back here. Now this is energy. It's a type of potential energy. As we rotate, we start with high energy. Why is this high? Because it's eclipsed. Eclipsed is always higher than staggered. Because when it's eclipsed, all these electrons are closer together. Let's start rotating. Well, they're rotating the back. Um, as you rotate the back, these electrons are separating some and getting more room, distance from each other. Because this is going back a little bit, and that helps. But you just have to take that point. Rotating. As it rotates, the energy starts going lower. And we get to this point there where it's like fully and nicely staggered. And that's the lowest point. Because if you keep going, we're actually going back towards eclipsed. And as you go back towards eclipsed, your energy starts rising as, you, as you're rotating until you get to that maximum point where it's fully eclipsed. Uh, but then we can just keep going. If this was the original atom, let's rotate all the way to the top. Back to staggered, which comes lower again. But see, this comes from because that's along the way. We're getting better, we're getting better, we're getting better, we're getting better, we're getting better. Ooh, we, got, we maxed out because if we keep going, now we're starting to get eclipsed again and we go back up. Ultimately, if you do one rotation of this guy, you go through these different levels 
and then you end up back at the original, and that's what they're taking you through here. And each rotation is 60, each discrete rotation, because, because 60 takes you to the maximum of the different, and then another 60 takes you back to the other maximum. In the end, here's a potential question that could be asked here. How many different energy levels are possible as you rotate fully with ethane? Do a full rotation of one bond. The answer is there's two different energy levels possible. This energy level which just repeats a few times and this energy level that repeats a few times. So that's the typical type of question. Um, understanding eclipsed is worse than staggered. Understanding dihedral angles. I'm never going to talk about discrete energy amounts. I'm never going to mention 2.9 kcal. I'm never going to do that. Uh, let's do another example. Down below we have different molecule uh, butane. Four carbons, butane. To do that, I'm actually going to take off two of these. No, I'm going to take off four. And I'm going to do butane like this. One, two, three, four. There's your four carbons. The H's now are these little tiny guys, which they're tiny anyway. Okay? We can still see them. Here's butane, and it can rotate. And let's look at this, ro this central bond rotating. What if we started here? Let's focus in on the two methyls now. How are they positioned? What terminology would you use? Eclipsed. They're eclipsed. Okay? Because if I hold them up like this, you see how one's right behind the other and you're not supposed to be able to see it. Okay? Let's rotate. I don't know if it's better. Let's rotate this one. Uh, how about 60? That's a standard rotation. You want to do 60? Let's do 60. Now what do you want to call the methyls? Are, are they still eclipsed? Mm -hmm. No, now they're staggered. Okay. All right. Let's rotate again. 60. That was 60. How are the methyls now? Are they eclipsed? No, they're still staggered. We're going to get a difference here. Top, we went, every rotation went back and forth. This guy's not going to go back and forth. It's actually going to look like this. Um, let's keep rotating and then we'll do it again. What if I rotate another um, 60? How are the methyls now? Are they eclipse? No. Um, this is called anti. It's the opposite of eclipse. Okay. Now, is anti a, is anti a type of staggered? It is. These are so small you can't see. Okay. But if I made the H's if I made the H's here green. Then you could more, just because they're bigger now, you can see better. You see how that's an eclipsed conformation? Because between here and here, I mean not an eclipse, it's not an eclipse. Between here and here, there's nothing eclipsing. That would be. Here the H and the carbon are eclipsed. Here, it's not eclipsed. And if you focus in on your two big groups, your big groups are said to be anti. Anti is a special type of staggered where your two bigger groups are anti. Anti is your most favorable conformation. It gives these groups the most amount of room. Anti is best. Now, if we come this way, we're going to start repeating. But let's do that here.
The new ones are drawn down here. Hopefully you sit down and make sure you understand the drawing and how you got to this point. Here the two methyls are what? Flips. They're supposed to be a flip. These are supposed to be right behind each other. That's right here. Two H's are like that. Two H's in the back. The dihedral angle between these is zero. Let's do a 60 rotation. It's actually there. <coughs> now they're staggered. There's a special name for this staggered though because we're going to see other staggers. This staggered is called Gauche, which is I think German for to the side. This is where the methyls are to the side of each other. Just, okay? This one's to the side of that. It's called a Gauche conformation. It's a type of staggered. We rotate again 60, we come to here. This is eclipsed, but the methyls aren't eclipsing. What's eclipsing? The H in the methyl. H in the methyl are eclipsing. Now, which is worse? Methyls, both methyls are eclipsing, or H in methyl are eclipsing? This is worse because methyls are larger. So we have different eclipsing. This has higher energy. With these, all these electrons closer together, that's higher energy. So if you look up here, A has higher energy than C, <coughs> even though they're both eclipsed. By the way, I don't know of any official term for this. I may have just missed it. But I call it fully eclipsed. When your biggest groups are the ones eclipsed. Well, I have a... This is maybe called partially eclipsed, so that's maybe a little bit misleading. This is the worst. I call that like fully eclipsed, full head on eclipse. Your big groups are eclipsing. Um, we might call that sin down the road, S-Y-N, because it's the opposite of anti. Let's keep rotating and come another 60 here. This is where the two mouthfuls are anti, the type of stagger. But anti is your best. That's why it sits the lowest energy. Dihedral angle of 180, right? Isn't this 180? That's 90. That's 180, anti. Now we're going to start coming back and repeating. We come this way, 60. That's eclipsed, but it's not the bad, it's the worst eclipse. Right? Come this way, staggered. What do you want to call that confirmation? Gauche. And that gauche has the same energy as the other gauche, right? F and B and F have the same energy. B and F have the same energy. We're actually starting to repeat. Uh, then we come, after gauche, we should come back to fully eclipsed. The eclipse. How many different energy confirmations here? Uh, it's a little bit misleading, or maybe not. A is the same, that's one level. Then you got the C E level, you got the B F level, and the D level, four. It's four different levels. See, the C and E level was actually the same level. They could have, they could have just, instead of naming this E, they could have called it like C prime. That might have been a little clearer in terms of normal levels. They call it E because it's a, it's a different confirmation. But the C and E confirmation have the same energy. Since they have the same energy, we just call that one energy level. I think the answer is four. Four different levels there. Where with ethane, there was only two different levels. Hopefully you see why you get four here. It's just because it, things just don't repeat as often as it did with ethane. Ethane, every time we turn, we, we were repeating over and over and over. This one had four different. Um, in the end here, anti is your best confirmation. Anti being your biggest groups, anti. What are bigger groups? Well, let's do some examples. In the middle here. Uh, first compound, show it in the lowest energy Neumann confirmation, looking down the 1, 2 bond. First off, 
off what is the one two bond. That comes from nomenclature. If you name this, you'll see the one two bond is here, here. Okay? Looking down. That means the one's in the front and the two's back here. We're looking down the one two. As we want to stand over here. All right? And look down there. One's in front, two's in the back. All right? I'm going to do this one way and then we'll maybe do it another way and let's get there. Front carbon, carbon one. What's on carbon one coming straight down to my feet? Fluorine. What else is on carbon one? A chlorine. Is the chlorine coming towards you guys or going behind the board? Behind the board. If I'm over here, behind the board, is that on my right or left? On my left. So I see carbon one, and the chlorine is going up and to my left. Carbon one, the chlorine is up and to my left. I'm drawing what I see standing over here. What's on carbon one coming towards you guys? Undrawn hydrogen, right? Bolded undrawn hydrogen coming towards you guys. If I'm over here and there's an H projected like that, and I'm looking at it, that H is on my right. There's the front carbon. Let's look at the back carbon. What's on, car what's on carbon two going straight up in the plane? This group, an alpha, going straight up in the plane, alpha group. We're not worried about that. You can draw that with any rotation you want. What else is on carbon two? Two undrawn, two undrawn hydrogens. One's towards you guys, the other's behind the board. The one towards you guys is to the right, the one toward behind the board is to my left. This is the original Newman confirmation of that compound. Is it the best? What's the biggest group on the front carbon? Chlorine. Bigger. Here I take. What's the biggest group on the back carbon? H, H, or, or ethyl? Ethyl. Are those two groups currently anti? What are they currently? They're currently gauged to each other. Is that the best, or should we put in an anti? Yes, anti's best. Okay? We can rotate either the front or back. I'll rotate the front. I'm just going to rotate this three, just like a clock dial, where the front can just turn. Uh, and I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to move the chlorine straight down. The fluorine is going to go here. And the H will go here. I did not rotate the back. It is the exact same. And there's your answer. The two biggest groups are anti. Question. And the best confirmation, what's, what's the relationship between the ethyl and the fluorine? <laughs> yes, and the best confirmation, the ethyl and the fluorine are gauche. Such could be a possible question. So gauche doesn't necessarily mean referring to the largest group. It's just referring to two groups that are next. Correct. Gauche is just a location. You can have large groups gauche. You can have small groups gauche. You can have anything gauche. No, not necessarily anti. Right here, which groups are anti? Ethyl and the fluorine. They're not the largest. But we want the, the largest anti and the best. Um, okay, uh, I wanted to draw a chair confirmation. Time flies. Uh, we'll be drawing chair confirmations like this, boom, 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 boom. We'll put in H's. We'll make sure that this one is perpendicular to this one. 
uh, et cetera. Um, okay. Please be looking at how to draw uh, cyclohexane confirmations. It's on the flip side. Please be looking at some of that over the weekend. Okay. Cyclohexane. And we'll, uh, on Monday, we'll try to pull things together. I have to go through it quick and then we'll sort of see how we're doing. Questions? And we'll do the rest on the page. The other examples, please do those on your own. See some of you in the lab this afternoon, downstairs.